Hi folks, today I wanted to update everybody on this important case. I think it's important. It's a case out of Florida. It's a United States District Court, Middle District of Florida, Tampa Division. So there was a postal worker, Mr. Emmanuel Ayala, who was arrested. This is going back to 2022, November of 2022, I believe. He was arrested and charged. He was indicted for possession of a firearm on federal property, namely the post office, and also for resisting arrest. Now, the order that just came out last week is why I think this is an important case for uh, Second Amendment folks and people who want to keep and bear arms in public to protect themselves and their families because there's been a question about carrying at a post office, for example. This individual, Mr. Ayala, is a test case for that. Unfortunately for him, it's, he's a test case, but the judge issued an order dismissing that charge. Now, the case is far from over. It's still pending. The uh, resisting arrest is pending, but I wanted to briefly go over this case, why I think it's a good case for people who conceal carry to protect themselves and their family in public. Let's get into it. So, Judge, Federal District Judge Catherine Kimball Mizell, U.S. District Court Judge, ordered the charge to be dismissed. Now, she says that post office, she, it's a 50-some page uh, opinion and order, and I'll put links to it so you can read it. It's, it's a good read. She goes on to reference Bruin and says, based on Bruin, United States government, and I'll just summarize these points here, the United States government cannot just say all federal property is off limits based on Title 18 U.S.C. 930. That's what he was charged under. And again, there are multiple charges. Apparently, he's a truck driver. He goes to work. I don't know if there's a metal detector, uh, but he's carrying concealed legally in the state of Florida because he's got a, a carry permit. And they stop him. The postmaster or postal inspector stop him and say, you can't carry, and they wanted to arrest him. I don't know if a struggle ensued there. He leaves, and apparently at a later date, he either turned himself in or was arrested, and he was charged. So, Judge uh, Catherine Kimball Mazel dismisses this charge, saying, according to Bruin, it's the state's burden, and she puts two main points. Nothing in the Supreme Court dicta establishes the U.S. may ban firearms in all government buildings. And also, the scope of the Second Amendment is a legal question or issue. It's not a factual one, meaning that she does not have to hold an evidentiary hearing. Instead, the government bears the burden to say historical analogs exist, and here's why. And the government could not do that. Uh, and we know uh, historically, polling places, legislative assemblies, and courthouses are three places that are brought up in Bruin, Nysherpa versus Bruin, to say that these are the established sensitive places that traditionally people have not been allowed to carry guns, namely because there are uh, security uh, measures in place to protect you when you're in those places. So now the government's trying to come in, and we know in New Jersey, New York, Delaware, Maryland, uh, California, all these places are basically establishing all these sensitive gun areas or sensitive places where they say guns are not allowed. And according to Nyserpa versus Bruin, you can't do that. And this case shows that in Florida. Again, the case is not over and the charge of the resisting arrest is still pending. Basically, the judge says uh, for that charge, uh, this is not the venue for me to dismiss that charge because uh, other facts about that incident and what happened and what led up to that have to be heard, and that's not the venue to do that. So she dismissed the charge of possessing a firearm on federal property, namely the post office. It's a really good read. Again, she goes into detail. It's not that long, but she basically says that she lists all the reasons why the government can't come in and say, you just can't ban it on all federal property, because she points out that 28% of the land in the U.S. is owned by the federal government. Uh, from the White House to toll booths to national parks, Social Security Administration buildings, just to name a few, and that many ordinary activities require you to frequent a federal facility of some type, like, for example, a post office. I mean, it's kind of absurd if you think about it. The way it is now under Title 18 U.S.C. 930, if you drive onto the par into the parking lot of a post office to mail a letter and you stay in your car, technically you're in violation, right? If you're carrying concealed, 
It's kind of absurd. If you go in to buy stamps, you're, you're, you're breaking that law, that code. It's kind of, kind of ridiculous, right? She's saying if the federal, if the government is allowed to ban carrying firearms, exercising your second amendment right to keep and bear arms in public, if the federal government is allowed to do that, then essentially they're doing away with the second amendment. Uh, and she says it's, it's not constitutional. So she rules, she basically says um, that it, the burden is placed on the government to say there's historical analogs that exist that say people have been prevented from carrying uh, at post office back at our time of our founding. And that doesn't exist. The government was unable to do that. So she dismisses that charge. So again, folks, I think it's a good case for uh, concealed carry people, people who want to exercise their Second Amendment right to keep and bear arms in public to protect themselves and their families. Just wanted to update everybody on this case. Again, it was last week, I think January 12th, 2024. Uh, she made her ruling, but it is a case that's back from 2022. I believe he was uh, indicted in November of 2022. If you like this video, please hit that like button and share it with anyone you think will uh, benefit from it. And again, if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. And if you do subscribe, hit that notification bell so you know when we release new videos. As always, folks, thanks for watching. Take care and stay safe.